Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and to see all of you early on a Sunday morning. It's great to have so many friends come together today for a very important occasion, and I would like to take a minute to acknowledge some of the special guests who are here. Congressman Gerald Nadler. <laughs> Senator Brad Hoylman. <laughs> Senator Todd Kaminsky. <laughs> Assemblyman Philip Goldfeder. <laughs> Assemblyman Charles Levine. <laughs> Assemblymember Walter Mosley. <laughs> Assemblymember Neely Rosick. <laughs> Assemblymember <laughs> David Weprin. <laughs> Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. You brought your own crown. <laughs> Council Member Rory Lansman. <laughs> Commissioner Roberta Reardon, Department of Labor. <laughs> Commissioner Audrey Zibelman, Public Service Commission. <laughs> and Stuart Applebaum, not in his Jewish capacity, but as president of RWDSU. <laughs> and to all of the presidents, future presidents, executives, ministers, and rabbis, thank you all for coming. This is an important day for everyone, and we are very fortunate that the governor is here to share it with us. Outside of Israel, you all know that New York State is home to the largest Jewish community any place on the globe. And under Governor Cuomo, the Jewish people in Israel have always found a friend in New York State. In 2014, Governor Cuomo led an unforgettable solidarity mission to reaffirm New York's support for Israel in light of the threat of attacks posed by Hamas and other extremist terrorist groups. No one will forget the picture of you, Governor, in that tunnel and the message you sent around the world with your words at that time still reverberate. <laughs> Having the Governor here with us today sends a clear and simple message. New York will always stand with Israel. It also represents the deep social, cultural, and political relationship that New York and the State of Israel share together. In recent years, Israel has faced a surge in violence unlike anything in recent history and continues to be the target of fierce anti-Semitism, which we see rising around the world. So it is especially timely that New York continues to build on its partnership with Israel and forge new bonds. I thank you, Governor Cuomo, for your continued commitment to our community, to Israel, and for your steadfast friendship over the years. It is now my pleasure to introduce the representative of the State of Israel in New York, the Consul General of Israel, Ambassador Ido Haroni. Good morning and welcome. Thank you, Malcolm Online. Today, we are gathered together to celebrate the great vibrancy, diversity, and strength of Israel. We're also here to celebrate and recognize our strong friendship with the State of New York and to reaffirm our support for one another and our shared goals and values. We're both proud and privileged to have such a tremendous ally in Governor, Governor Andrew Cuomo. From leading a unity trip to Israel in 2014 that Malcolm talked about, I had the privilege of joining the governor on that trip. And let me remind all of us that Governor Cuomo was the only governor that came to Israel during the summer of the year 2014 when 60% of Israel's population was in bomb shelters for 52 days. So from leading a unity trip to Israel in the summer of 2014 to standing in solidarity with our people during the darkest of times, Israel has had no truer friend or partner. Israel and New York have a special relationship. Our values are collective, as in our drive to achieve them. Liberty, democracy, freedom, and human dignity. As we celebrate today, I want to note the importance of that continued partnership. Right now, around the world, there are voices of division, groups of extremists. They're trying to oppress, they're trying to divide, they're trying to tear us apart. They are eating at the very fabric of our society, working to spread the politics of division, of hatred, and of discrimination. Together, we must reject these ideas. 
We must work to heal our people, build bridges of opportunity, and look at the very principles upon which these states were founded. I know working alongside Governor Cuomo, we can come together to lead with light rather than the darkness once again. Thank you, Governor Cuomo, for your unwavering commitment to Israel, your staunch support, and most of all, your true friendship. Now, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming the 56th Governor of New York State, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. Uh, first, to Malcolm Homeland, who for so many years has been such an outstanding leader. Uh, literally generations have learned from Malcolm, uh, and he's done a beautiful job, and uh, Steve Greenberg is his chairman. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Council General, what are we going to do without you when you leave? Can we uh, appeal to someone and make you stay? How do we do that? Uh, Ido Aroni has done such a magnificent job for Israel but he's been such a pleasure to have uh, in New York uh, on so many different levels. And he's been so kind in facilitating the relationship and so effective. Let's give him a round of applause, please. <laughs> we also, Malcolm did all the uh, introductions. We also have Councilman uh, Jerry Nachman, uh, Congressman Jerry Nachman, who's with us. So I'd like to give him a round of applause. <laughs> Council General mentioned our trip in 2014 to Israel, uh, which at that time Israel was under attack. And that is precisely why we went at that time. Uh, it's nice to have friends. It's nice to have friends when times are good. It's better to have friends when times are bad. And a real friend comes when you're under attack. And 2014, Israel was under attack. Today, Israel is under attack on a different level. And that's the true test of friendship. And New York is a true friend of Israel. We've shown it before. We're going to show it again today. And we're going to show it every day in the future. So, <laughs> Council Gentlemen, thank you. We have the uh, Salute to Israel Parade today. I'm excited. I love the parades. It highlights a part of what New York is all about. New York is a diverse state. Uh, New York is an international state. Uh, we have people from all over the world, and it makes us uh, different, frankly, more sophisticated when it comes to international relations because we live with the balance every day. Today, we salute Israel. The first parade was 1964. Israel was 16 years old. Uh, and uh, we've been celebrating every year since. When you think about Israel and New York, uh, it is a story of intertwined histories and common futures. I believe that. The connections between Israel and New York uh, rival connections with any country. Literally, they are intense. They are cultural, they're economic, uh, they are spiritual, they are natural, and they are symbiotic. And they have existed for a long, long time. You look at the connections historically, culturally, uh, in many ways, uh, it's, it's amazing. The words on the Statue of Liberty that guide the founding of this country, this state, uh, give me your tired, your poor, Emma Lazarus, written by a Manhattan Jew. Uh, David Ben-Gurion studied here in the New York Public Library. That's where he learned the lessons of American democracy. Uh, also found some time to meet a young nurse who he later married, but came to study and learn American democracy. Uh, so the connections go on and on. Uh, Yoni Netanyahu spent so much time in New York and that adaptation. First, Israel flag sewn by 
a man from Harlem. All these connections on every level have drawn us to this point. And I think it's important to remember not only do we have a beautiful history together, but we have a future together. Because especially today, it's becoming clearer and clearer that we have a common enemy. 20 years ago, I went to sit uh, with Shimon Perez. I was in Israel, but I met with Shimon Perez, who to me has always been an inspirational, powerful figure. And uh, it was a very special meeting. He first chatted about my father, and uh, his knowledge of New York politics was unbelievable. Forget U.S. politics, New York politics, I think he knew better than I did. And he had a special relationship with my father, and he said about my father, uh, your father uh, is not just, who was governor at the time of New York, is not just a political friend. He's a friend here. Uh, which was very touching to me and very true. And he said 20 years ago to me, I'll never forget, uh, that we have a com common enemy and they come for us today, but they come for you tomorrow. They come for us today, but they come for you tomorrow. We, Israel was more proximate. It was easier for them to get to Israel. We had the comfort of oceans. Travel wasn't as easy. There wasn't an internet. But they come for us today, they come for you tomorrow. This is before 9-11. This is before Madrid. This is before all the hate on social media. He was exactly right. That connection is true. We have learned that the alliance serves us both extraordinarily well. The Iron Dome in Israel. What a beautiful example of collaboration and what you can do when you collaborate. If you would describe to someone that system, they would say, it's impossible. But we did it together. Israel's location is a strategic advantage for this nation. Israel's knowledge of terrorism is a strategic advantage. We're relative newcomers to this battle but Israel has done it every day for decades. So I am surprised and saddened, in truth, that with the political turmoil in this country, there have been so many questions raised about our relationship with Israel and our support for Israel. I'm sad as a Democrat. As a Democrat, I always took for granted that there was a natural relationship with Israel that was unquestioned. And it was that way for many, many years. And it's one of the things that gave us pride as Democrats. You now have aspects of the Democratic Party that are being critical of Israel as being disproportionate in its response. Don't get me wrong. I still think the Democratic Party and the leadership of the Democratic Party and the candidates of the Democratic Party are far and away stronger supporters of Israel than of any other party, not to get political. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but to question uh, Israel's response uh, saddens me. To question the situation they're dealing with and the tenacity of their opponents uh, misunderstands the situation. Council General mentioned the tunnels uh, that we went to see. And we went to Israel partially to publicize the tunnels because they said in pictures what millions of words could not communicate. Look at the tenacity and the obsession of this enemy, that they would take funds that, frankly, they could have better used on their people for fundamental services and construct miles of tunnels. And these tunnels, by the way, are not just, we have a shovel, we dig a tunnel. These are cement-reinforced electrical conduits this just showed the, the determination, the single-mindedness 
that these are people who are bent on destroying Israel. That is their purpose, and that is their primary purpose. How can you have a disproportionate response when you are dealing with an enemy who is obsessed and single-minded? By definition, you can't be disproportionate. And they will do everything that they can do, and they are. And as frightening as those tunnels are, and as radical as the mindset and obsessive as the mindset that built those tunnels, this BDS movement is in many ways more frightening. Because what they're saying is they're not making a physical attack, they want to make an economic attack. And it's not just radicals who are willing to build tunnels, they're going to mainstream businesses across the world to generate a corporate, a corporate enemy for Israel, and we cannot allow that to happen, period. <laughs> now, in New York, we believe that you lead by example. And I am very proud that the members of the legislature who are here uh, in the Assembly and the Senate, both houses, have been uh, grappling with this issue of uh, BDS uh, for weeks and for months, and we've had many, many conversations about it, and I know their feelings. Uh, in New York, we're also a place of action, and uh, passing legislation, even when you have good intent, can often be a tedious affair. Let me say that. Tedious is fine, right? Uh, and we want, uh, we want to take immediate action because we want the world to know and we want Israel to know that we are on their side. Today I'm going to sign an executive order that says very clearly we are against the BDS movement and it's very simple. If you boycott against Israel, New York will boycott you. If you divert... <laughs> revenues from Israel, New York will divert revenues from you. If you sanction Israel, New York will sanction you, period. Thank you. We are against the BDS movement in every way. We are against companies that do it. We are against the promotion of it by companies and by entities. I am very proud to be the first governor in the United States of America to sign this executive order. And I encourage every... I encourage every governor in this country to sign such an executive order. New York one of the great capacities of New York is New York can lead by example. And when New York does something, it's a fair question for every elected official all across the country. Why don't you do what New York did? That was true historically when we led in all sorts of social reforms in the women's movement, environmental rights movement, human rights movement. It was true when we passed marriage equality a few years ago. And I signed that bill. And the next week, they went to every elected official across the country and said, well, New York, Governor Cuomo signed the marriage equality bill with you. They went to the vice president and the president. The next week, literally, New York signs this executive order today. It's a fair question for every elected official. Why don't you sign the same executive order? Why don't you stand up for Israel? We want to know wh where you are who you are, and actions speak louder than words. Sign the executive order. We all pray for peace. New York prays for peace. Israel prays for peace. The world prays for peace. The difference is the best way to achieve peace is to have a strong Israel and make that the international statement, and that's what we're doing today. Thank you, and God bless you.
This is, this, is, this is a great day for all of us in this great city. But before we go our separate ways, just listen for a moment. I want to reiterate, reiterate how important this executive order is, both for Jews in New York and the Jewish community around the world. Israel is the leading symbol of justice and democracy in the Middle East, and the BDS movement is trying to directly undermine that progress. So look, look, I'm not going to read the rest of these remarks because we all want to do one thing. We want to march with our governor, all right? Be at 55th and 5th at 11 o'clock. Governor, thank you for your stalwart support standing in solidarity with Israel. Your friendship has been a beacon of hope for all people. Thank you all for coming. On behalf of everybody here, thank you, Governor Cuomo. Thank you. Well done.